Hello, everyone, and welcome to Conversations with Matt DeLockery. Today, I want to talk about something that's a word that you may not have heard of before, but it's a really, really good word. And I usually try to reduce theological language and technical terms, um, and I just did a video about that recently, except where there's a really important word that you need to know, and we're going to talk about one of those words today. It's called praxis. Uh, it means practice or the the act of doing something. Um, in Greek, Acts of the Apostles is actually praxis of the apostles. It's about what you do. It's about how you live the thing out. So you've got theology on the one side, and then praxis is over on the other side. So, so those are sort of two sides of the same coin. It's what you believe, and it's how you live things out. And the thing is, for the last 2,000 years in Christianity, we've primarily just focused on theology, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Um, beliefs come first, and then you figure out how to live out those beliefs. So you kind of got to get the beliefs down first so you know what to do. Um, but really, for most of that time, what we've sort of done is just like, these are the things to believe. We talk about what to believe, and then theologians sort of like kick things over to pastors and then expect Pastors just be like, okay, take that theology and explain to people this is how you live that out in real life. Well, um, one of the big problems with that is that the world is a bit different now than it used to be. So as long as the world we lived in was pretty similar to the world of the Bible, then you could just be like, well, look, the uh, Bible says do these things, so uh, do these things. Well, our world's a bit different now, and it's changing. And a lot of conservatives can be like, well, you know, that's you're just trying to say that culture changes things and stuff. Like, well, let's assume that culture doesn't change anything. There's still new questions and new new situations to to figure out what to do with. Like, basically everything technology, like you're paying attention to me right now, you're listening or watching through technology, which literally requires quantum mechanics to make this stuff happen. Like, that wouldn't happen without quantum mechanics. We couldn't do this. So... Lots of science and lots of technology are involved in even listening to me talk about religion. So you can't just say, well, it's, you know, just just do these things we've always done. And to a degree, yes, but to a degree, no, our world, world is wildly different than it used to be. So we need to pay attention to that. And here's the other part of that that most people don't necessarily realize. It's doing the praxis side of things like trying to live out what you believe actually teaches you more about the theory the belief side of things uh, and the way i like to explain it is is like this imagine imagine you're a gymnast and you're trying to learn some new kind of flippy do which is you know clearly the technical term so you, you, you're trying to learn how to do this new flippy do your coach explains this is how you do the thing you move like this you do do things like that and then, you know, you go and try the flippy do, and you, you don't get it entirely right because, you know, even pros and people with, with gifts rarely get everything right the first time. Uh, so you go and you practice. You get some bits right, you get some bits wrong. And then your coach is like, okay, well, you did this right, and you did this wrong. Um, try this and, and, and modify what you're doing in this way, and then you get a little bit better. Then you go back and your coach explains, okay, now you're, you're mostly right. Now do a little bit of that. And then you do that, and you see how this sort of like gets better, and you go up and up and up. You start with the the theory side of things, and then when you try out that theory in practice, you 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 give it a shot, and you get some of it and not others. But that helps you understand better what your coach was saying, so your understanding of the theory actually improves. And then as your understanding of the theory improves, you can actually practice it a little bit better and do it and perform it better when you when you give it a shot in real life. And that helps you understand the theory a little bit better. You see how this works? It's this back and forth. So you're not just going around in a circle between theory and practice. It actually is a spiral because you go up a little bit more each time you do this theory and practice thing. You start with the theory here. Coach says, do this thing. You try it out. And because you tried it out, now you understand the theory a little bit better, and you were down here, and now you're up here, and then you keep moving upwards and upwards and upwards the more times you go around this spiral. And that's what the interaction between theory and practice looks like. Or, if we're going to apply this to religion and what you believe and how you live 
uh, in your in real life, then its beliefs are on this side, theology is on this side, and praxis is on this side. That's the other side of the coin. It's the practicing the flippy do. It's the working things out in real life. And so theology is super important. And I'm not trying to say there's less importance or we need to you know stop paying attention to it. We absolutely need to pay attention to it. But if we don't really work on this praxis side of things, if we don't try stuff in real life, then we're not even going to understand the theology as well as we could. You have to try it in life to understand it. You have to practice the flippy do to understand the theory of the flippy do. It's not that the physics change. The physics never change. They are what they are. But it's your understanding of the physics that changes. Practicing living out, you know, loving your neighbor is going to change your idea of what it means to love your neighbor, you know, to act selflessly on your neighbor's behalf. The first time you hear that, you're like, I'm not fully sure what that means. And then, I mean, I guess it is kind of like this. And then you try it and you're like, oh, that's a little bit different than I expected. And that changes my ideas on things. So my understanding of loving my neighbor has just changed a little bit. And so then I go try to do it again. And it's a little bit different. And, and you move and you spiral up, even on something as as most as basic and foundational as loving your neighbor. Now, now the command to, to love your neighbor has not changed anywhere in this. But your understanding of what it means to love your neighbor has changed. And so we cannot ignore the praxis side of things, not just because the world around us is changing, but because we will not understand the theology. We will not understand the beliefs and, and what we should, what is true, unless we actually take some time to practice this in, in real life and, and figure out what this looks like, because beliefs and actions are not separate. Theology and praxis are not separate. You need the one to understand and be able to do the other. And moving upwards on the spiral is where true humanity lies and where knowledge of God himself, not just knowledge about God, but knowledge of God himself, that's where that lies.